to the first meeting to be conducted by Bajan County Butter Council remotely. Due to the government's advice to the public to avoid all essential travel and to practice social distancing, this will be a virtual development control committee meeting. This meeting has been recorded and will be available via the council website to be viewed for following the meeting. If during the meeting a technical error occurs within the transmission, which cannot be resolved within a reasonable period of time, then the meeting will be closed and the remaining business will be deferred to a further date of the development control meeting and the date to be determined and notified by way of the publication of the agenda on the council's website. Everyone participate participate in meeting, we access in this meeting from remote locations. Please go everyone assure that the mobile phones are switched off, including myself, onto silent mode. Members will receive their electronic copy of the agenda on Friday the 29th of May. I will ask officers to present a summary of the key points. For the record, the agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting. And those speaking may switch up the cameras at this point. But I would ask that with the exception of myself as chairperson, and at other times keep your cameras and microphones switched off. Well, this will help to minimize any background noise and interference to ensure the connection remains as stable as possible. If members and officers wish to raise a point of question, you, they should use the instant messaging IM on the left hand side of the screen. But don't come in until invited to do so. In the event that the committee requires to vote on any item of the business before or at the meeting, I've announced that the members of the committee have 20 seconds to vote by typing for against or abstain. In the instant mention icon, I will then ask the legal officer to announce the decision by the committee. The meeting will be supported by planning library officers and the legal officer for the Democratic Services and the IC department will be supporting the committee and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout the meeting and where necessary we mute those not being used. Before me formally commence, I will now ask the officer from the Democratic Services to announce the names of the councillors in attendance at this meeting. I would also ask the officers to introduce themselves as and when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They should ensure that microphones and cameras are switched off and not in, when not in use. I will go to the agenda. Andrew, could you introduce the members, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. For the benefit of the uh, the video, my name is Andrew Reese, Democratic Services Manager, and the members present today are Councillor Gary Thomas, Chair, Councillor Nicole Burnett, Councillor Janice Lewis, Councillor Richard Collins, Councillor David Lewis, Councillor Richard Granville, Councillor Matthew Voisey, Councillor Keith Edwards, Councillor Carolyn Webster, Councillor Mike Kern, Councillor John Spanswick, Councillor Sorrel Dendy, Councillor John Paul Blundell, Councillor Kenneth Watts, Councillor Ross Derman, Councillor Amanda Williams, and Councillor James Radcliffe. We also have um, met local members present as well, the ward members. They are Councillors Malcolm James and Councillor Rospin Hill Thomas. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. The non members, Andrew? Andrew, could you come back, please? Certainly, Chair. The two non members, are they allowed to speak or at the end? They they will be speaking. They they will be amongst the, the first speakers to speak um, once you get into into the report, Chair. All right, okay. thank you. Right, item one. Apologies, please. Any apologies, Andrew? I have no apologies, Chair. Thank you. Item two. Declarations of interest for members and officers. Are there any declarations of interest, please, for members? Um, I'd like to ask for some advice on whether I have a prejudicial interest or not. Right. Rodney? 
Legal Office Chair, please. Yes, just coming in, Chair. Uh, if we, Would you read it, James, please? Yes. Yes, I don't believe I do have a prejudicial interest because although the report highlights I'm in, I was in favour of the application, I'm open-minded to the extent that if another member were to make a very persuasive argument that the development shouldn't go ahead, I'd be prepared to listen and change my mind on it. Um, as the report notes, um, I did express a couple of issues that I would have wanted seen uh, through the report. So I'd like advice of whether I am prejudiced or not. Uh, thank you, Councillor. No, I would advise you that you're not prejudiced. Uh, as long as you keep keeping an open mind until you've heard the uh, report and uh, obviously the debate, I think you're fine. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very Hi, much. James. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. No one else. Thank you. Item three: Approve the minutes on the 27th of February, please, 2020. I'll second, please. I'll second. The minutes, yeah. chair. Second. All in favour? Aye. Thank you. Item four: Move for the amendment sheet, please. I'll formally move. I'll formally move, chair. Second. Thank you very much. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Yeah. Yeah. Item five. Let me see it. Andrew, you going to take this November Control Guidance Committee? Uh, or, or is it Ross? Uh, Rod, please. Uh, do I ju just come in briefly, Chair. R that's for information for members only. All again, thank you. Uh, sorry, Chair. Councillor Wosey, please. Right. Um, right. With the um, minutes from the previous meeting, I did, sorry, have a point on minute 366. Um, there was an amendment um, at the meeting that the opening hours of the application would be changed. The, uh, grateful if, uh, the opening hours for the um, show home stroke cabin were to be amended from those of the application. And I'd just like to have that noted. All right, Jen. We bring Rodney in. Rodney? Not Rod Rodney. It's a. Oh, hold on. You mean Rodri chair? Right. Yeah. I've got, um, yes, that was correct. In the last committee, we discussed the uh, sales suite at the housing development in Penavay. And um, effectively, we, we altered an existing condition to relate uh, to that sales suite and to restrict it to an appointment basis only and the opening hours were restricted as well on certain days of the week and at certain times of the day so uh, that has been changed and that did uh, make its way onto the decision notice thank you Rod. all right Councillor Bozzi perfect thank you thank you very much item six planning application p stroke 20 119 slash full a gem paper mills, sign on it, my stag. When you're ready, please, Rod. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. Good afternoon, Rodney. The application is reported to committee owing to its scale. The significant public interest and its nature as a scheme requiring an environmental impact assessment. I will not attempt to repeat everything in the report, but will pick out the most pertinent points. As noted in the report, only two of the many representations that were received in response to this development object to the scheme, and there are no objections from statutory consultees. The expansion of the factory site will take place across three separate phases and will include building a second hygiene tissue paper production line, a new pub storage and bale handling area, a new sludge press building, 
a second paper machine building for another production line, a converting extension, an auxiliary material storage area, a high bay storage warehouse and a shipping area for the finished products. The project is expected to take 63 months to complete and represents an investment of in the region of 100 million pounds to allow the production of approximately 115,000 tonnes per year. Once completed, the factory will require an additional 74 workers on top of the 267 staff already employed at the site. The site has an extensive planning history and the expansion of the factory is supported by enabling developments as highlighted in my report. The proposal has been refined over time and has been the subject of a comprehensive pre-application consultation process as well as pre-application negotiations. Whilst the site is ostensibly in the open countryside, the factory site itself is designated as a protected employment site under policy REG 129 of the LDP. In addition, paragraph 5.4.4 of Planning Policy Wales advises that where possible, planning authorities should encourage and support developments which generate economic prosperity and regeneration. As the factory is the subject of a permit under the environmental permit permitting regulations and it is likely that Natural Resources Wales will agree to a variation of that permit. The main considerations in this case revolve around the impact of the development on the visual amenities of the area and the residential amenities of neighbouring residents and the impact of the development on the highway net network as well as the scope to adhere to the requirements of the Active Travel Act. The remainder of the issues that have had an influence on the proposals, such as air quality, presence of coal mining features, the potential for flooding, adequate drainage, noise impact, biodiversity enhancements, contaminated land, groundwater pollution, and the treatment of invasive species have been satisfactorily addressed within the various documents submitted with the application and are covered in the report and conditions. The majority of the scheme is in keeping with the existing factory development and will blend into its industrial surroundings. However, it is acknowledged that the high bay storage building that forms the main part of the third and final phase of the development will be a prominent feature in the landscape and will have an impact on the occupiers of the adjoining residential properties. The paper mill site occupies a less elevated position at the mouth of the Nantgwyn Valley and is relatively well screened by an established belt of trees along the A463 and as a result of the topography of the surrounding land. The selected viewpoints in the landscape and visual impact assessment included a range of typical views into the site from sensitive receptor sites. Due to the compact siting of the new buildings close to and around the existing buildings, the vast majority of the development will be lost effectively within its setting and will not have a significant visual impact from mid to long range distances. The assessment suggests that in nine out of the ten cases, nine out of the eleven cases, the effect ranges between slight and moderate to high, with a majority being evaluated as having a moderate impact. Due to their proximity to the proposed high bay storage building, the viewpoints from the farms to the north have been rightly assessed as being highly sensitive. The existing factory, within the, with the exception of the stack, is not readily visible from these properties, but after phase three of the expansion, the proposed storage building would be noticeable behind the gradual ridge and established natural boundary features. The occupiers of the bungalow at Prince Hero Farm are particularly concerned about the impact of the high base storage building on their views and outlook. Unfortunately, the height and siting of the storage building is unavoidable due to the lack of an alternative space within the wider site. The established location of the distribution element of the business, the storage needs of the expanded factory and the physical constraints of the overhead power lines and bedrock. Having re reviewed the orientation design of these two properties and their relationship with the new storage building, 
it is concluded that the visual impact would be greatest from outside the properties. However, the mitigation measures put forward, such as utilising similar materials, controlled by condition, reflective finishes, directed lighting, and tree retention and protection, will sufficiently reduce the landscape and visual impact of this building, and on balance, the visual appearance, design, and scale of the development is acceptable in this location. During the construction phase, a number of abnormal loads will need to be delivered to the site, such as the second paper machine and routing plans and delivery timeframes will be agreed in advance with the council. The existing car park at the entrance to the site will be remodelled and used for truck parking in front of the replacement gatehouse and a new 250 space staff and visitor car park will be constructed to the north of the site. This area will include electric charging points, disabled parking spaces and cycle parking and a covered walkway to the factory. The second access is the subject of a separate application and will be the subject of an agreement with the highway authority for the works to the adopted highway. A new traffic light control junction, a right hand holding lane and changes to the speed limits on this stretch of the road. The second access will effectively become the goods in raw materials entrance whilst the existing northern access will be the main goods out and staff entrance. There is some concern that the expansion of the operations of WEPA will result in a significant increase in HGV traffic along the A463, as well as its potential impact on the network at Tom D and the village of Cotrahan. The site currently generates 90 HGV and staff movements per day, and the proposed expansion of the site is expected to increase the HGV and staff movements to 138 per day, or four new movements per hour. The existing vehicle flows are approximately 750 movements per hour during the day, increasing to 1,200 movements per hour during the AM and PM peaks, and the development traffic equates to an increase of between 0.6 and 1%, which is not deemed to be material. This minimal increase would not materially affect the operation of the network and will not reduce highway network capacity to a point and to such a degree where highway safety would be compromised on the A4063. However, a delivery management plan has been requested which seeks further details on how the company will successfully minimise HGV traffic during the peak network hours. Whilst the additional HGV movements will not be detrimental to the local network, the intensification of traffic through Tondi and the village of Cotrahane should be considered and mitigated against. It was concluded that contributions towards the implementation of highway and pedestrian safety measures should be focused on culture here. It is appropriate and commensurate with the scale of the scheme to request a financial contribution from the developer of £20,000 for the implementation of a traffic warning and calming scheme on the A4063 through culture in, in compliance with the requirements of Technical Advice Note 18 and Planning Policy Wales in relation to mitigating the impact of the development on the surrounding highway network. In addition, a travel plan and transport implementation strategy have been prepared to meet the requirements of the Active Travel Act 2013. The measures are intended to reduce reliance on single occupancy private car travel by encouraging staff to walk, cycle and use public transport. There is significant local support for improved walking and cycling infrastructure in the area and most benefit would be gained by seeking a contribution towards providing an active travel route along the A4063 through the provision of a financial contribution of £60,000 towards a feasibility study for segregated walking and cycling route alongside the A4063. And in regard to these measures, there are no objections to the proposal from a highway safety perspective, particularly as the number of vehicles using the existing site will only increase by 48 vehicle movements per day. It is therefore considered that the local highway network can successfully accommodate the expansion of the business in this location. To conclude, the proposed expansion of the factory is acceptable in this specific location as it is allocated and protected for employment purposes 
and will result in an overall economic benefit for the wider county borough through the safeguarding of existing jobs and the creation of new jobs and any impacts from the expansion have been sufficiently mitigated. The application is therefore recommended for approval subject to section 106 legal agreement to cover the contributions as mentioned earlier, uh, conditions attached to their recommendation and the details contained within the amendment as circulated to members earlier this afternoon. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Rod. Could I have a move on a second, please? I'll formally move it on with the amendment, Chair. Second. Thank you very much. Yeah. The recommendations on page 45 to 53. I will now ask the board members and the joining board members to speak first. I will now ask the case. Right, that's all right. Is it Tom Beagle or is it. Uh, comes up to James to speak first. Blackcliffe. Comes up, Blackcliffe. Uh, no intention. One second. Somebody's at the back one speaking out there. Are they gone now? Sorry. Councillor Radcliffe, you want to speak? Uh, no intention to speak. I'll listen to the debate. Then. Thank you very much. Councillor Beagle, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. No intention that uh, I had my say this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is Councillor James going to speak? He's not here, is he? Right. I'll go to members now, please. You see. There's no... Uh, Councillor Bozzi, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple of points. First, first issue... Um, I think that this application has been well presented and I'm very pleased with the level of consultation that has been undertaken with the, the local community and looking at the responses um, that have come in, there is only a couple of objections um, which um, obviously we, we need to look at. Um, clearly one of the major concerns that I have and I think it's been raised and dealt with by the planning officer is on the highways issue and the additional traffic and the access roads into and onto the site which i believe are being dealt with under a new application um it's a shame it can all be in this application but we'll trust the uh, highways department to make sure that, that is is correct so i just need confirmation that we have no worries on the highway you said it i just need to be confirmed to answer the question the second point is um, it, it's the High Bay building. Uh, I mentioned it this morning at um, the um, site visit. Um, I do have some concerns about the decoration of this building, and it will be, if it's a big white building in the green countryside, um, that, it, that it will look out of place. Um, not out of place for an industrial facility, but for a countryside facility and for the residents of the farm. And I would ask if consideration can be made that it's camouflaged in some way um, to, to, to improve its appearance on the farm side. Um, I do note on the amendment sheet there are other issues regarding soundproofing, um, which I was going to ask about but seems to be covered. Um, but there was one thing I picked up on the meeting this morning. Um, in the current yard, there seems to be an awful lot of paper um, in the outside area, and clearly there is an implication of dust and um, if the wind's blowing, dusts everywhere. And I just wondered if, um, with the new facility, the open air storage of what looks like waste will be enclosed to reduce the amount of dust in the atmosphere. Thank you. I got Councillor Rod, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, uh, the, the highways elements of, of this scheme um, have been assessed in, in great detail uh, for the Highway Authority. 
and you're right the second axis which aims to separate the two elements of the development and then the factory um, is the subject of a, of a standalone application um, and it has been uh, considered and, and been in negotiations with the higher authority for for a number of months and uh, we are working towards getting to a point where that scheme is acceptable in that location and the works in the adopted highway will be acceptable and controlled not only by the planning permission but also by a section 111 highway agreement uh, between the parties um, in terms of Right. Um, the High Bay building, yes, we, we discussed it quickly this morning and, and I've gone into uh, great detail on the impact of that in, in the report and the fact that uh, it's unfortunate that it has to be that size and, and prominence, but uh, there are constraints limiting any other options for that building. But you're correct in saying that we can control uh, the materials, the finishes, the uh, the colouring used on that building, which will um, which will hopefully reduce its uh, sheer visual impact, not just from those properties, but also from the wider area, especially from places like down from Betus, looking down onto the factory site. Um, the materials will definitely be non-reflective, so at least you won't get the glare off it. But we'll be, we have a condition on the recommendation seeking full details of the finishes of the, the various buildings on the site before we, uh, we, for discussion and, and agreement before it's actually built. So, so that's the control there. In terms of dust, um, from our shared regulatory services officer's point of view, um, that element is controlled through the permitting with NRW, but he did pick up on the point that during the construction phase, and there will be dust suppression uh, measures implemented through the condition that we've we've uh, attached to the consent. But uh, from my understanding of it, um, the factory does not uh, produce a high level or a, um, a huge quantity of pollutants or dust as it stands, but the the new facilities and expanded facilities will be able to store it more internally rather than, like you said, in the basically the yards between the road and the factory. So, in essence, this this modernising of the facility will uh, reduce that scope for dust to escape into the environment, even though it's. Uh, uh, quite heavily controlled by Natural Resources Wales as well as part of the permit. I think I've covered your your three points there, Councillor Voisey. But uh, yeah, thank uh, thank you very much, Rodri. Thank you, Councillor Voisey. Thank you, Rod. I'm going to go back now to two ward members, Councillor Edwards, please, and Councillor Ross Pennant and Thomas, please. After Councillor Edwards. Yes, thank you, Chair. Let's just speak uh, to uh, Keith. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Hope you're well. Anyway, I will be fully supporting this application, Chair. It brings much needed jobs uh, to the locality. I thank WEPA for their investment and their commitment to the workforce at Flanganoid and hope that this can be the catalyst for further investment in the uh, in, in our valley communities. Um, I've looked at the highways um, issue. I, I see no reason uh, to object on that basis. If you take into consideration that um, 10 years ago, there were some 2,000 jobs further up the valley uh, on the um, Iweni Road site, and if you consider the traffic movement involved there, then I think uh, this overrides the 1% increase or less than 1% increase that this traffic uh, of, of traffic movement that has been identified. So I see no reason to object. And I repeat again, I thank WEPA for their commitment 
to our community and to the workforce at Thanganoid. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Ross Pendant Thomas, please. Yeah, thank, thanks, Chair. It wasn't my uh, my original intention to speak, but I just concur with Councillor Edwards' uh, sentiments. This is an absolutely phenomenal investment uh, in the local workforce in an area that desperately needs uh, jobs of uh, this uh, this type. Um, highly skilled workforce. Uh, it's obviously a, a massive boost to the the local economy. Uh, you'd be well aware of the you know Mystig and the Llynvi Valley is estimated to be one of the worst affected areas following the impact of coronavirus. Uh, this will be a huge investment in the local area, and uh, I fully support and welcome this investment. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ross. Right, Member, Councillor Colin Webster, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I would just like to say I welcome WEPA's confidence in the UK's economy at this time. Um, between Brexit and the coronavirus, it's a massive investment in capital and in our local workforce, and I am delighted to support um, this application going through. I'm pleased to see that the environmental adjustments um, which have been proposed, including planting trees and the Bat Hotel, and down to uh, the investment in the electronic vehicle charging points. That's a good, a good thing to see there. Um, whilst it's not part of the plan, I hope that the developers and WEPA could perhaps consider at a later date, not, not as part of this one, but if they can consider an education centre which could be used for use uh, by local schools and organisations in the area which is set aside for wildflowers and um, other planting, and perhaps they would consider some beehives. I know that other members know that I do go on about bees a lot, um, but they are very important, and of course those wildflowers will need them, so hopefully that's something they can consider in the future, but I support this application going through. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Amanda Winners, please. Hello? Can you hear me? I can, yes. Great. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm just reading off my questions. Um, I've got two questions, and um, again, I'm grateful for the detailed presentations that we received from WEPA. I'm happy with the consideration of the traffic management, as I often drive past uh, and use the roads. I just wanted to check. I know that we're looking at a standalone application for a second exit. Will this be a requirement prior to the work being carried out on this site? Is that being considered as necessary for the expansion? And also, from the video this morning, I understand that they utilise water from the Llynvi River. Will the expansion result in any increased water being required? And can the river accommodate this without any adverse impact? And those are my questions. Thanks. Thank you very much. Rod, please. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, right. Uh, second exit. Yes, I believe we've got a. Um, I can't remember now. It was, it was a, about a week ago. I finished the report. But we, they are uh, linked together, effectively. The second access. So the expansion can't go ahead without the second access. The second access will be needed without the expansion. So it's effectively to improve the efficiency of the whole factory, it's to avoid the pulp being, um, or the, um, the material, raw materials being transported all the way through the site. If you know that, if you think about the layout of the site, all the way through the existing main access, all the way past the, um, the car park, et cetera, and the, and the gatehouse, and somehow get around to that corner of the site, then you'd be quite convoluted, and it was deemed necessary to have a second access on there, just to separate the two elements and make the business work more efficiently. So, yes, we're confident that that access will will proceed um, because uh, the expansion will depend on that. Um, in terms of the video this morning. Da, 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 uh, did you say water being abstracted from the river? 
Is that, is, was that the... in their in their when they took us on a virtual tour around the factory, they told mm -hmm. us that they pumped the water in from the river. And I just wondered if there would be an increase in this pumping required if they increase the capacity on site and whether the river can cope with that. Yeah, the water abstraction is um, is, is effectively controlled and, and measured by Natural Resources Wales. Um, there are there is another paper machine being brought onto site called Neptune. The existing one is called Jupiter. So there is going to be an extra demand, um, but that would be controlled not not by us as the council, but more by um, Natural Resources Wales as a as an abstraction license. So I'm sure they would have calculated how much would be needed and uh, cr uh, crossed that uh, point off with Natural Resources Wales as, as part of their um, assessment of the feasibility of the scheme. Thank you, Councillor. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Councillor John Lewis, please. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, it's just on the actual point of the walkway and the cycle track. Um, do you think that you'd have sufficient monies to actually implement that, bearing in mind there doesn't seem to be a walkway there or a cycle track at present? Rod, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, um, initially, um, we did have thoughts as, as a council, as, as a local plan authority and highway authority, that it would be nice to have a combined uh, pedestrian and cycle route uh, for the frontage of the site. Um, but in effect, that would have been an island and it would, would not have been connected up to any other active travel route. So you'd be off the road for a bit and then for the length of the frontage of the site and then back onto it. So we've decided that the best course of action in this instance would be to seek contributions towards a detailed feasibility study, hopefully with match funding from Welsh Government as, as they are pushing the, the agenda on active travel um, in Wales. And so that will fund a feasibility study into uh, developing a route, not just in this particular area, but along the, the corridor as a whole to encourage people to use uh, more sustainable modes of transport, um, especially the staff for the business as well. So so luckily the the applicant has, has agreed to providing that contribution so that we can put it together with any match funding that we can source to assess the feasibility of, of an active travel route up that corridor as requested um, by I think um, the assembly assembly member uh, for the area here with Ranka Davis uh, and uh, local members as well so uh, it's it's obviously a key consideration in our thoughts. All right, Councillor. Thank you very much Rodri, thank you, thank you Chair. Thank you John, thank you Rod. Councillor Spanzig please. Thank you, Chair. Hear me okay? Right, yeah, we can hear you, John, please. Right, thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, first off, I, I fully support the application. Uh, it's great news for the economy by stake, the wider agenda, the jobs long term, and the jobs short term in, in the construction phase. But believe it or not, I got a question on the 106 agreement. Um, two parts of it the, the, the highways financial contribution of 8,000, which is not just Applies this applies to all clubs. How was that eight thousand we calculated? There? Because that, that appears to have increased over the last year or two. It was six thousand, maybe said. I was just wondering how that is calculated, what where it goes and what happens to it. Um but I'm trying to gauge the scale of this development and whether this this is reasonable for community infrastructure for development this size. And we are only asking oh not to say only, we're asking for sixty thousand pounds sort of feasibility study. One, I don't know how how is that being calculated? Bear in mind, it could be much funded with Welsh Government. So are we talking of £120,000 on a feasibility study before anything actually happens on the ground? Um, it may cost, I don't know, it sounds a lot of money being spent just on feasibility study. Um, and the 106 agreement itself says it, it must be spent on that. I prefer if it said it could be spent on 
the feasibility study or, or any active works that could be done, whether they're small parts. Because I think um, Rod, you just mentioned they wouldn't want to create parts like an island, not linked up. But for years, we've had many, many parts of cycle routes and travels throughout the county about it not linked up. Slowly, they are becoming more linked up. And it would be nice to think at least the lower part of the Timby Valley could have a short route that people could walk and cycle to this development. So one, whether I'd like to know how we gauge whether 60,000, know, how that figure is gauged is appropriate for this scale of development. Because if, if we had a development of 30, 40, 50 houses, we'd be asking for a lot more than 60,000 plus 20, 88,000 pounds in total community infrastructure um, contribution. That's not to say I'm welcome in the development, um, but I, I just wonder whether we're getting, well, I say whether we're getting enough out of this development for the community infrastructure. Thank you, John. I, I, I can come in there, Chair, if you. It's oh, okay. Um, it's a it's, it's a good point that's raised by by the member. Um, the, the first part of the question, which is regard to the traffic orders. Um, I'm not entirely sure how that's calculated. I'll defer to one of my colleagues to perhaps explain that in a little bit more detail. But um, that's that's just the cost of making the order. It's it's the the advertising costs and the admin and the, the legal costs associated with that. Um, but in terms of the active travel contribution, um, well, and, under planning um, law, um, under the, the, the community infrastructure levy regulations. We are we are restricted what we can demand from a development, and we can't really go over what that development would um, would reasonably be able to to uh, or extra traffic or extra um, requirements that that development would reasonably generate. In in this particular case, we did have a lot of discussion on on the um, what form that active travel uh, <coughs> should take, and that active travel contribution. It's a little bit difficult in this area because we, we've the reason we haven't progressed very far with active travel measures along the Flinvy Valley, uh, along the um, A4063, is because it, it's so problematic. There, there's m multiple landowners. Uh, some parts of it, there's, there's no footway. It's, it would require multiple land purchases and agreements, and that, that would cost Disproportionate to what, what we're trying to achieve, um, so we could we could have insisted perhaps in having a, a stretch of footway along the frontage of this particular site, but it wouldn't connect with anything. It wouldn't connect to the settlement in in the Mystig end, and it wouldn't connect very well with the um, uh, the, the the infrastructure to, to the south. So what you'd get is a footpath along the front of the of, of of the development site, which isn't particularly acceptable, and may not be part of any infrastructure we put in in the future. So what we've sought is, is £60,000 towards um, uh, feasibility, and that feasibility will look at not just along the frontage of this site, but will look at the active travel, potential active travel routes in the Slinvy area that will Hopefully, one day we'll be able to connect. Maybe not long A463, but an alternative way to, to, to connect people to the settlements of my stay and into um, Bridgend uh, to the south. The £60,000 is calculated based on what we have spent in other schemes and feasibility work in other schemes. But if we've got this £60,000, we can go to Welsh Government and say, we have got a um, Section 106 contribution. Could you provide us with more money to um, carry out or to complete that feasibility work? Sixty thousand pounds does sound like a lot. One hundred twenty thousand pounds is more, but when it comes to feasibility, um, that money is is very quickly absorbed. When you take into account the the fact that you have to actually employ some uh, people to actually do the surveys to uh, to actually look at the feasibility, whether it's physically possible to put routes in. Then you have to carry out consultations. Uh, then you have to go through the well tag procedures. A well tag in itself is eighty thousand pounds, you know, for a, for a very small type of de um, transport development. So it's it doesn't go that far, but it helps. And with that much funding, we can 
at least get some idea of where and how we can develop the active travel links at the moment. Uh, and that's why we, we've taken this, this approach in this particular instance. We recognise the value, we recognise the importance of active travel, um, and that's why we want to, to develop that scheme further, which will, in time, will allow um, uh, more link linkages uh, with, with, with the settlement, which is where I understand the majority of the workforce uh, are coming from. But at the moment, we couldn't insist on a direct active travel link from the site into the settlement, because uh, that would be disproportionate to the, um, to, to, the, to the development we're actually approving. Because bear in mind, it's already an existing facility. It's already up and running. This isn't new development. This is already there. So we'd only be able to ask for the increase in potential uh, traffic movements that would be generated, which wouldn't have been an awful lot. So I'm not sure if that's answered your your query in that, but um, I'm happy to come back if there's if there's any other further queries. Thank you, John. John, John yeah, thank, yeah, okay with that. Thanks, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. Councillor David Lewis, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yes, in relation to um, the application, fully supported, 100%, no doubt about it. Reservations or about the feasibility study on cycle and walking route. Certainly couldn't happen on the main road now, because as Jonathan highlighted about the private ownership of land and all that, the only place it could go is east of the River Sinvi and the railway line. And then you've got uh, land in private ownership. So I can't actually see the reason why we should be looking to do it. It's so impractical. So maybe I think a contribution of money could go towards something which is wanted more than a feasibility study in, in the area. OK. Thank you, David. Um, Councillor Watts, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I apologise for not uh, joining the uh, the uh, the visit this morning, but I, for some technical reason, didn't receive the invitation which I could click on to. Sorry um, about that, Councillor. So um, I, I heard a bit said about the uh, high bay storage uh, facility and agree with Councillor Voise's comments, but it's on that that I do wish to comment. Um, Rodri use the words highly sensitive, uh, it's noticeable um, above the natural boundary features and so on, um, but it's unavoidable, unavoidable with its size and prominence. I do wonder though, um, you know, camouflage paint was mentioned, um, that could not this building be camouflaged by design? I, I, I cannot believe it's beyond the wit of an architect to change the roof line um, of that high bay storage so that it somehow becomes a feature in itself, a pleasant feature in itself of, of the skyline. Uh, it's, it's a hundred million pound project. And I do believe that if an architect were to give just a little thought to the roof line, um, it could become something better than we, we see it at the moment. Uh, I know that this is a subjective thing, um, but I, Having heard the other comments made, it is obviously of some concern, and uh, maybe the, the the architects and designers of the new plant can uh, give it some thought before it's built. Thank you, Chair. I will come to web, sir. Jonathan, is uh, the applicant there this afternoon? Or the... Um, yeah, the, the we have representation from from the applicants and the agents. Can we bring the them in, please? They they, they not normally in in, in planning meeting they wouldn't normally be allowed to speak because we 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 wouldn't. Uh, it's not normally part of our protocol. Um, I think um, I think we need to perhaps we might take um, Rod, Rod's legal view on this if um, if if that's okay. But I, it, it, I think you may need an agreement of the committee to to actually allow that. But, I get it. Uh, if if I don't know if Rod wants to clarify that position, yes, uh, Chair, if I can come in there. Um, Your means, uh, Rod. Yeah, as as Jonathan has pointed out, applicants and agents only normally speak uh, if there's an objector who speaks, and then they they get three minutes to respond. Now, uh, you know the scheme is there before you. 
I suppose if committee wanted a factual point answered, uh, they could ask for you, Chair. But as I say, it's not it's not the normal practice. Um, a committee would have to be happy to, uh, if you like, to depart from normal practice for this. Uh, to ask such a question, but um, I mean, the alternative is uh, the point that's just been made by Councillor Watts is perhaps to uh, to ask the planning officers to to discuss this uh, with the the applicants, you know, in due in due course. Would you be happy with that, Councillor Watts? Uh, yes, I would. If um, uh, Jonathan and Rodri could uh, keep me I'm involved in that. Keep me involved in that. Yes, I would be happy with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can, can I just come back there a second, Chair? Yeah. Just to, just to clarify, I think I think what we we got to be careful of as well is is that what we what we're determining today, um, uh, what, what we got here today is 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 what we what what we are what we are determining. This this is the scheme that we're determining. If there is any subsequent amendments to that, that will require a further committee decision um, you know this it's it's it would go probably beyond what we would class as a minor amendment um, I, I think there's uh, as, as councillor Watts has said it is subjective the design um, and in my mind it's a simple design as a, as a as a planner I think it's a simple design but it's perhaps the most effective design uh, it, it is an honest design. It is what it is. It's it's a big building. It, it's a storage building. It's it's sort of rectangular, cube, uh, square shape. It doesn't actually do anything else. So, I think it's actually because of that simplicity. I think that perhaps, at a personal level, I would say that that lends itself to that landscape area as much as possible. Something that may be different and I think what comes to what is trying to get at here is, is something that actually creates a visual, a striking visual feature which will then draw more attention possibly to it, um, to the eye of, of people that uh, that are within the vicinity or, 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 or passing by. Um, there may be some scope to look at the final finishes possibly, uh, there, could, there could be some, um, some, some tweaks to that but I think if we're looking at fundamental change, that's something that we would we, we would be diverting from from what's in front of you today. So we need to need to bear that in, in mind. Um, I think the other thing to think about is this is an existing plant, and, and any building will be viewed against the backdrop of what is an existing um, uh, existing facility. So I, I would um, ask members to sort of uh, bear that in mind um, that we, we we are what we've got in front of us is what we're actually. Uh, going to determine. Thank you, uh, Jonathan. I'm going to bring Councillor Bosey in now, and then I'll have Councillor Mike Kern. Councillor Bosey, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, re really, it's just about the the comments from uh, fellow councillors and officers. Um, yes, we have in front of us what we've got in front of us, so we have to determine against that. Um, but as there is some margin for discussion over the finish of the tower, I, I do think that we need to get um, a favourable outcome for the, the, the local residents and the community as to its, its the ability to look at it in, in, in a favourable way and also that the, the, the objectors who have objected to it um, have seen that their objection has been listened to, not just completely ignored. Um, if you look at the the application and the the, the artist's impressions, of what it looks like um, to, to coin somebody else's phrase, it looks like a carbuncle. Um, but um, it is a functional factory. It is a building designed for function, and clearly, um, that's what is we have to determine today. You know, we we would like all sorts of fancy look like a church or something, but that's not what's in front of us. So I do think we have to accept what is in front of us, but we can request that it is made to look pleasant on the eye. John, thank you, Councillor Thank you, Chair. I think um, I, I, I take the point as well. But if, if you read the report as well, members, you'll you'll see that in in this sort of concluding paragraphs, what we're trying to present to members here is, is that we accept that this this is going to have a significant impact on in, in the area in terms of visual landscape. 
um, presence. And, and the, the, the report is, is actually concludes that this is in balance with the other benefits that the scheme could bring. So the, the scheme is bringing employment, it's retaining existing employment, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very positive um, economic benefit to, to Bridgend. Uh, this is a significant place, this, this is a multinational company that in choosing to invest in, in, in their infrastructure within Bridgend. So we've taken into account the, the, the physical and the landscape visual impacts and all the other impacts. And the conclusion of, of the, the planning conclusion is that on balance, the, the benefits of the scheme tend to outweigh any of the issues that have been raised. And I, I fully understand the concerns that have been raised by the, um, the, the, the nearby residents. And yeah, if, 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 if I suppose a lot of us were in that position and suddenly you have a big building of that scale uh, within the vicinity, yes, it's going to have an impact. And, and I, I fully accept that. And, and those views have been taken into account. Uh, they've been addressed quite considerably in the report. I mean, the, the issues have been addressed in the submissions, the uh, comprehensive environmental impact assessment that's been submitted with the scheme, which included a landscape and visual impact assessment. So all that, all that's been taken into account. All that information is, has, has been, um, has been uh, processed, um, assessed, evaluated, and what you see in, in the report before you is, is the, the professional officer's um, view. So I, I think we need to bear that in mind as well as that, yes, we accept that there's an impact, but it's, it's quite appropriate in planning terms to weigh that against any other planning benefits that, um, that, that will, will come with the scheme. Um, so that, that, that I think that, that needs to be um, taken into account, uh, members. Thank you, Jonathan. I know we spoke to the applicant this morning, and he said it's all environmental friendly, even the colour. I don't know if you've got to accept that, but on my left hand side here, there's a lot of members not happy about it. But anyways, I'm going to take my coon. Come to my coon, please. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I'm uh, more than grateful for the investment by WEPA into the environment, our area up there. It's good. We need it. So I'm basically fully supportive of it. The only question I'd like to ask is regarding the uh, traffic lights down by the Tondi Bridge. I know there's a proposed uh, improvement of that. Have they taken into account the very fact that if land more development start building, that's going to create more traffic around by there? I just want to know if they've taken that into account or even if land more are going to develop in the next five years. I don't know. That's my basically my question. Rod, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, just going back to the issue of the visual impact of the building, I, I might ask Craig to put up a, a plan that I put together, just showing the the outlook from the two properties. And we and you probably heard John say in the past that planning is all about the wider public interest rather than the than individuals and individual properties. So uh, we'll, we'll have a look at that in a minute. But in terms of the um, highway network down in Tondi, uh, we'll come back to this, Craig, in a minute. But in terms of the uh, highway network in Tondi, yes, that's been approved as part of the outline consent for the Clamo Home second phase for up to 450 dwellings uh, on land uh, west of uh, Maestad Road. Um, there's an application in with us for reserved matters for that. They have to put that bypass in. Uh, forgive uh, me if I'm incorrect here, but it's on the 156th occupation, I think, uh, of those properties. Um, and 136. I've just had the note from Rob now, so uh, as as if by magic. So uh, on the 136th um, occupation of those dwellings, that bypass will need to be in place. So that's taken on um, the information of the extra traffic caused by the, those number of houses. And in actual fact, with the need to transport a heavy piece of kit up that um, highway route, the two parties, Lamo Homes and uh, Wepper, have been in touch to discuss 
time and timings and schedules because um, apparently the highway network as it stands now is uh, it's easier to use the highway network now to transport that big paper machine rather than once it's been uh, improved through the bypass so so they have been in discussions as well to make sure that the choreography of that doesn't end up meaning that by transporting that Neptune machine up then it will take out various parts of the highway network so so that that's all been thought of and calculated and assessed in the round as part of the two developments as well in terms if Craig can put that back up please Craig on the uh, that plan I, I've mentioned it in my report but from it's literally two farms or well, one bungalow on a farm and as you can see here um, members we, we accept that it's, it's <coughs> very, they're very close to the development or that it's been there since the 1960s um, in the report as well I've shown the sort of the windows and the main elevations of this is the, the objectors property and the dining room window uh, sorry the lounge window is in the south elevation of a bungalow and that is directed in a southerly direction so it will look over the with the levels it won't actually see it but it will look over the uh, the um uh, proposed truck car park there the rectangle in blue is the pro the pos proposed positioning of the high bay building and likewise for Brinkhawachvaur, which is to the east, their main elevations are in a southerly direction and look out over uh, the sort of minor parts of the factory site. So as I said in my presentation, the main impact will be when they're out and about outside the properties rather than within the properties. So what we're, we're assessing then with, with these measures to reduce the impact of the building I think a flat roof reduces the scale of it. If we start adjusting the roof, then it'll probably make it bigger. It's been designed to the nth degree in terms of the demands of the business. It is functional. There are, because of the topography of the site, the lower part of the building won't be as prominent as, as the top bit. But as I said earlier as well, unfortunately they can't spread the building out on a bigger footprint but on a lower height because of the constraint of the overhead lines to the north so it it is uh, as far as the remaining land left within the site that this um, high bay storage building could be positioned this is the optimum position due to the distribution areas uh, the uh, proximity to the main access for distribution and effectively is the only part of the site left that could accommodate a building of this type so we've got a condition on there about samples and finishes and we will look uh, in great detail on to uh, with regard to the finishes of this building to try and uh, minimize as much as possible the visual impact of this building thank you chair Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Mike. Now, Council Board, you want to put a picture there of what he means by digital type, DPM. Yeah. Are we going to allow it? Rod? Legal. Oh, sorry, Chair. Council Board, you uh, want to put a picture up. Council Board, he wants to put a picture of. Yeah, of digital type, what he means about the building. Please. Yes, well, I, I don't see uh, why not, but um, as I think Rodri's just explained, there is a condition mm. for us to agree final finishes and so on. Do you want so, to look uh, at this picture, yes or no? Yes, if, if, if committee wishes it, Chair, no problem. Right. Councillor Bozzi, please. Yeah, I'm just, um, have a look, someone still got the camera on. Hello. Right. Can you 
Oh, sorry, it's not a fantastic. Can you check? Oh. There we go. It's it's a digital picture. Um, I just got it off the internet. Yeah. And Could, Commissioner Bozzi, it's a bit clear. Can you send that to Rodney or, or Johnson, please? Um, I'll try my best. Okay. I'm, big, I'm big. got to find it. Well, they are got to meet up with uh, our picker, Danny Giz. Yeah. I'll send I'll send it forward to the to the officers. But it's basically a digital disruptive pattern material, as you. Um, similarly, by the military to reduce the visual impact of um, uh, equipment and men um, in the countryside, and yeah. um, being being the new digital version, apparently it's very highly effective. And I would just ask: I've seen it on lots of buildings in my travels, and it does actually break up the outline of these big um, warehouses. And I fully understand the building is functional, it's built to a design, a requirement and a cost. Um, it's just the decoration as opposed to the actual building. I understand it can't go underneath the power lines. It has to go there for the, the flow of the materials and the finished goods. Um, it is simply the, the finish that I think needs to have some consideration. But I will send this, this image um, to 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 the officers just to um, so they can have a look at it, see what I mean. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have I got no more speakers? Does anybody else like to add anything? Yeah, can I say something, Chair? Of course, you can. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I, um, in considering all aspects of this application, I'm sure the members of this planning committee are very well aware of the massive financial commitment this represents to BCBC by WEPA. I share Collie's concerns with the aesthetics and nature conservation, but I fully support this application and its positive effect on not only the Maestig and Bridgend economies, but those within Wales and the UK. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, comment, uh, Richard. Uh, Thank you, Chair. Right. What are we going to do now? We're going to go up to a digital vote. Uh, and if you look on the left-hand side, if you hit that IM button, and you can write down for, against, abstain. And then the legal officer then will now announce the decision by the committee. Are there any more questions, please? Yeah, Councillor James has requested to speak, Chair. Councillor Radcliffe. Uh, Councillor Malcolm James. Malcolm. Good afternoon, Malcolm. Good afternoon, Gary. Can you hear me? Of course we can, yes. Right. <clears throat> I've listened with, with great interest to some of the, the questions there, right? And first, I'd like to thank WEPA, like Keith said, for a, a hundred million pound investment in our area. The paper mills has been a quality employer, right? On on the the questions about the tower and all that, right? Where's it going to be? It's not going to impact on 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 the village of Llangynnoid. It's not to impact on my stake. The only impact that's going to have is when people are passing by, right? If they want an impact, there are pylons above the paper mills, right? Which are an eyesore. Okay? So I don't think that is going to have such an impact as some of the councils are making it out to be, right? You can see it from Betos, of course you can. You'll be able to see it driving past, right? But you will not be able to see it, I'm sure, from the village of Clanganoid, certainly not from Convellian and my stage. So that is my argument, right? And I welcome this, and I thank WEPA for this wonderful investment we have. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Magan. Right. The only people allowed to vote are the people on the planning committee. So when you're ready now, type in for, against, abstain. Rodney, when you're ready, all right? Legal. Yes, Chen, I'm ready. You got 20, 10 seconds left. It, 
Is it time finished, Jay? Just about, yeah. When you're ready, Rob, please. Yeah. Uh, I've got un unanimous fours here, Jay. Oh, wonderful. Nobody, I haven't seen one against, so I think that's unanimous. Right. All, that's Canada. Thank you, members, and thanks very much for your participation today. Jay, there's, there's one other item, which is, is there any urgent business? I don't think it is. No. Anything, anybody? No, no thanks. Thank you very much, all. You take care and stay safe. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yes, yeah, certainly. Thank you,